All right, welcome to the fourth and final part of how to make a travel video series. In this last video, I'm gonna be talking about balancing filming your trip while still enjoying your trip. And the first question you need to ask yourself, which might sound a bit silly, but it's, do you actually wanna make a travel video? Because you may want a video of your trip. You may have seen other people's videos and gone, oh, I'd love to have that of my experience, but do you actually wanna spend the time and effort making a video of a trip. I'm talking about investing in equipment, carrying all that stuff with you, spending time filming whilst you're on your trip, backing up all your footage whilst you're on your trip, and then spending all the time editing when you get home. And the reason I ask this is because I've met a lot of people traveling who've had cameras filming it, said they're gonna do a vlog, a video, whatever, and it's never seen the light of day. They just got home and given up with the footage or whatever. And so, if you don't actually wanna spend the time and effort to make one, then don't waste any time on your trip filming. Just go and enjoy yourself. For me, I obviously love making travel videos and it gives me something creative to do whilst I'm away. Like if I'm not doing anything creative, then I start getting itchy feet. So it gives me something to do on the trip. Plus whatever burden it might be to actually film your trip, for me it's a necessary sacrifice in order to have a video at the end. So let's answer some of your questions that tackles us straight on about not letting film your trip and get in the way of enjoying it. I sort of say the key thing is, is to make filming your trip part of the experience, not a burden. Like if you've booked a trip and at the last second someone goes, ah, sorry, you've got to film it, then it's like, Phew. It's a burden, but if you make it part of the fun and part of your journey, then it doesn't get in the way so much. But also, you have to remember to turn the camera off. Like usually if I get to a cool place, I'll get the shots that I want, talk about it, shh, turn the camera off and enjoy it. I'm basically just gonna turn the camera off for a few minutes, stand here and enjoy it, because it's just beautiful. As you get more experience with filming and editing your travels, you'll get to know what shots you need. So for example, when we're in Philippines and we're watching that sunset in Chicago, which is a beautiful moment, we're on that beach for maybe an hour, of which I probably spent maybe five, 10 minutes max filming, but the rest of the time I was just sitting there, camera away, enjoying it, taking it in. That, like, that view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So like I've been saying, just remember to get the shots you want, then turn your camera off and remember it with your own eyes. You know, Carrie's asking a similar question before about how often do I find myself filming on a trip? And if you're doing an activity, you just kind of film it as you go and it's part of the experience. You know, to go back to the burden thing, you never want it to be like, oh, hey guys, let's go have some fun. Wait a minute, I've just got to film something. You know, you don't want the filming to get in the way of the fun, you want the filming to be part of the fun. So it's like, if someone's like, oh, hey, let's go do this, it's like, cool, bring the camera and film as you go. And another thing to know is filming your trip and enjoying your trip don't have to be mutually exclusive because the more fun we have on the trip, the better the video ends up being. So by filming, it can actually encourage you to do more fun and more interesting things rather than just, you know, sitting on a beach all day. And one thing you have to make peace with as well is you're never going to be able to capture the entire experience on video. There's always going to be some great stories that happened off camera and some of them you don't want on camera anyway. And no one will ever know what that means. Yes, I tell it. You know, you've got to think of your video, it's kind of like when a book's adapted to a movie. You know, you always get people going, oh, they missed out this bit, this bit, but it's like you can't film the entire book because it'd be 20 hours long. You've got to just have a two hour film. So it has to capture the spirit of the book. So your video, yeah, it's not gonna have every moment, every highlight, every cool bit, but hopefully your video will capture the spirit of your trip and that's why it works as a nice reminder and a nice souvenir. So much fun, so much fun. Okay, so you're on your trip, you're filming it now, you're getting some great stuff, but um, one of the questions I get asked the most is like, how do I organize my footage? How do I back it up? What I do is, you know, I take a laptop with me and then I'll back up all the footage onto an external hard drive and then I'll back it all up onto another external hard drive. So I've got two hard drives that are exactly the same. One I keep in my day bag, one I keep in my main bag. And so if one gets lost or damaged or stolen, I've got a mirror of it. And then if that did happen, I'd buy another drive and still have two of them. Now I just keep it in folders with just the dates to begin with. That's all I do on the trip. And like my mate Paddy from The Budgeteers, he's sort of asking, oh, do I edit on the go and try and upload on the go? or do I wait to do that when I get home? And the answer is, I do all of that when I get home because you're on your trip. You wanna spend as much time on your trip enjoying it. I don't wanna be sitting around editing, doing all that. I can do that when I get home. I wanna have, I wanna keep as much time free as possible for just enjoying being in that country and experiencing that country rather than sitting around by a laptop. I do all that all the time at home. Just trying to upload a video on shitty hostile Wi-Fi will take forever. And even if you're thinking, oh, I'm in like a country like Australia and New Zealand, the Wi-Fi is going to be amazing. Not in hostels. 
hostile Wi-Fi generally sucks. Just enjoy your trip. Just back up your footage, worry about editing it when you get home. This next question is coming from Charlie Keep. She said, any tips for keeping your motivation for filming going on longer trips? And, um, you know, with HK2MY, there were bits where I got sick of filming and there are some big narrative gaps in that video. But what we did, like, when we got to Koh Phangan, we actually had like 10 days on that island. We kind of gave ourselves a holiday within the holiday. So we we're like, right, let's just chill out here and just not film, not film for a while. If you're staying in the same place for quite a few days, and you're just gonna be hanging out doing similar activities, then you just put the camera away for a few days, you know. It's like I was saying earlier, you don't have to capture every single moment of your trip. You can't capture every single moment of your trip. It's just not gonna work. So just give yourself a good rest every now and again, and then you sort of find the motivation uh, keeps going. And I've also found sometimes on trips, if I got some downtime, I'll kind of go through the footage I've already shot, just have a look at it in Final Cut, and then, you start realizing, oh, hang on, no, we've, we've got some good stuff here, we've got a video here, we should, we should keep going. You know, I think one of the problems on HK2MY was I kept thinking we haven't filmed enough, and so I was just getting less and less motivated, when actually some of the places we filmed way more than I actually remembered, so. Just, yeah, have a look, look back through your footage and see what you got, and you, go, you might realize, oh, I've filmed lots of this aspect of the trip, but I haven't filmed that yet, so it gives you motivation to sort of film different sides of your experience. Now, Mahmood here, I hope I pronounced your name right, mate, but uh, um, one of the questions I get asked is this one a lot, is like, how many hours of footage do you film? And I don't know, because, you know, it used to be back in the day, you'd film on hour-long digital tapes, so if I've got 10 tapes, I'll film 10 hours, but now, um, I don't know, because it's all just like individual clips and cards, and because I'm constantly backing it up, and then, you know, wiping the cards, <sighs> No idea how much footage I film. No idea. The other question he's got here is from the about the Franz Joseph sequence in New Zealand, and he's like, "Well, if you look at that sequence, we're flying in a helicopter to the glacier, and he's like, well, how come I've got shots from inside the helicopter and from outside as well? It's just me and one camera. How do you do that?" So. I'm gonna ruin the magic here, but yes, it's just me and one camera, but there's two helicopters. So, you know, shots from inside of me flying, and then once we landed, I just filmed the other one coming in, cut the two back together, and you've got your sequence. You know, some people ask, oh, do I plan out how I'm gonna edit a sequence whilst I'm on the trip, or do I wait to get home till it comes to life? And, you know, you can plan it in certain ways, like standard establishing shots and things like that, and make sure you're telling the whole story, but, one of the edits I did plan uh, whilst I was on the trip was at Franz Joseph because it has that bit where it cuts back to James and he's still asleep in his bed. So like we woke up that morning and he was just not getting up and I saw him and I immediately knew exactly what I was going to do. So I filmed that shot and I knew I could have us in a helicopter, big Lord of the Rings music and then just cut back to him and that's going to get a laugh. And so that's one of the ones I planned right there and then but other times it just you know comes alive in the edit. That was and so that's it, that's the end of this mini how to make a travel video series. Hopefully it's been packed full of lots of tips and advice that can help you get started and on your way. And if it hasn't, well, too bad, you've watched all of them now. <laughs> but uh, next up on the channel will be tips and advice for solo female travelers from people who've had experience being a solo female traveler. I uh, can't wait to edit that, it should be really interesting. And then next week, James and I are flying off to Japan for the next adventure. So that'll be the next big film coming online, probably March, April time. So yeah, usual thing. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, check out the t-shirt store. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.